this bit admittedly is a bit boring you don't really learn much about the car it's interesting watching how the water goes but other than that nah the interesting bit of the cleaning is when you get up and personal with it so I think we'll fast forward until we're doing that This may seem boring, and the big panels like the roof are, but when you get into the, the creases of the bodywork and stuff, you notice things that the, um, the designers have done. Um, it means you really get to bond with your car, know your car like no one else does. Uh, so, yeah, if you get someone to clean your car, you never get to appreciate certain things about it. So one thing I've, I've noticed is the angular sort of aspect of the MG logo has been carried through with the, the crease on the roof and the way it corners off towards the headlight. And if you look at the crease on the spoiler, it matches the crease on the boot that goes around the uh, MG logo. I think it's very smart. Yeah, this crease here, it's just very nicely. Designed. I really like what it does to the shape, and it does remind me of the creases they put around the logo and the logo itself. Smart. I didn't say I was good at cars, cleaning cars, but I said I liked cleaning cars. Before you go, ooh, you're not very good at this. I like the bonnet shape. It is a bit bland in the middle, but you can get like decals and things to stick on there to make it more interesting in the middle. But I wouldn't, because I think it looks stunning just as is. Wish you could spec a black grill though, rather than the chrome grill. Not a fan of chrome uh, on modern cars. I like them on classic cars. Again, I like the design of the bumper. It's very careful, especially with this headlight. It's quite, it makes the car much more unique than the original uh, pre facelift It's quite a nice design to the headlight. It does make the car seem quite premium, oddly. Uh, well, not necessarily oddly. The whole car on the, on the look side is way up there with the more expensive cars. But like, yeah, like I said, I'd rather this be black. And chrome. It'd be nice if you could spec it rather than having to figure out how to take it off and paint it black. I do like the little uh, splitter at the front, more for show than anything else, but it does look nice. And this grill is very nice as well, sort of like the Mercedes grills. Um, but I think it's nicer because it doesn't have the little shiny things on it. MG logo. It's nice to see that in the car. The daytime running lights being this strip here actually really adds to the character of, the, of this car. You see it in reflections of shop windows and you go, it's a nice looking car. I don't normally like daytime running lights, but on this car, they definitely work. Doors. Now this would be interesting, because people say the sign of the of the MG3 looks a bit like the Skoda's modern Skoda design. My mum actually has a Skoda and I cleaned that car as well, so it'd be interesting if I sense that. I think one of 
most striking things about the MG3 that you even get in, in the photographs of them is this very sharp transition from windscreen to roof. I think it sets it off from the crowd. I'm not sure if it's brilliant aerodynamically, but it's not. Overall, the aerodynamics of this car is average. Uh, the CEO, the CEO. So, uh, yeah, be interesting on the motorway. See if there's any noise, wind noise. It's obvious. Obviously, these large door mirrors will work to that as well. But it's nice having large door mirrors. It's actually quite nicely thought out because you've got the sharp crease at the front of them, which is nice. And you've got this gradual curve, just as it starts to feel like a wall of metal. Yeah, it's this sharp crease again. It really uh, breaks up the lines of the car. I think it's a very good looking car. Even on close inspection, I like the little details of how it feels when you're in it. It's a tactile design. The gear though. Well, most of the panel caps are good on this car. This one here, and this first bit of plastic piece, the second one, is not so good. But that's a bit picky, really. I think uh, any car at this price is going to have little plastic parts because plastic is different. this and save your money and get a Mercedes when you can. Or a Lexus. I did like that Lexus. And again the, the theme here of that hexagon, on, even on the uh, the door mirrors. Something that I, I didn't notice until I started cleaning the car. They're not sold on the door handles, protruding like they do, but it's just, they're not sold. I'm very picky on door handles. The door handles I like the most in the world are the old um, Twingos. They lift up one time. Cut out for the door handles though, underneath these pockets. Again, following that angular theme, it seems to be going through all parts. I really do like the spoiler design, I think it's very neat. I think the angular wheel tail bikes are also very neat. Like this pillar. Yeah. Actually, we're looking at photographs. How this pillar moves reminds me of the older Austin 1100, which they did an MG version. So the MG 1100. Don't think it's deliberate. It just happens to remind me of it. Rear tail lights really feel quality, and the front lights actually really feel quality while you're cleaning them. Something that uh, doesn't necessarily feel that quality on my uh, old Fiat. So it's nice to see that it's done correctly. Here. Yeah, bumper now. Again, following that sharp angular style that's run through the whole car. I've got a little cut out of the blue, which I quite like, I think it's distinctive. You know what, I'm even sold on the uh, fake diffuser on this car. I think it does look nice. Or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it works. The last thing to do is the wheels. And there's something that people actually 
really notice about these cars is the nice alloy wheels. And I would agree. They do set up the car quite nicely. They are very nice. There's the MG logo. Centre cap. It's actually very similar to the one on my old classic MG. So I think they have they have taken some design inspiration from earlier cars. Yeah, that was really educational. So the things that really highlight out for me is the hexagonal shape to this, matching the MG logo. This sharp crease and the line that follows the roof here down. The fact that this here, this cutout and this rear spoiler matches the little indentation they sort of put around the MG logo. I like this rear fake diffuser. Normally I don't but it somehow it, it works on this car. I do like the fact that this also follows the brake light. I'm not a fan of these door handles. To be honest, they're not my thing. They stick out far too much in the car and ruin the line. Uh, I like the alloy wheels, I think they're really nice. But I'm not, when you get to, to the bottom of the car, you start to notice where they're saving money. This sort of thing, and down here. But nowhere else did it feel cheap. Yeah, I really like the headlights. I think the daytime running light that runs along here is fantastic. Not so much a fan of this checkered pattern. Looks sort of like a, a finishing flag, I guess, or a, like for a race, and maybe like carbon fibre but I'm not a fan of it. I don't like the chrome, but it sort of works. I'd rather it be black, but hey, what can you do? Yeah. That's why you should clean a car, you get a real understanding of the vehicle. I think it's really, really surprisingly nice. The other thing, the only thing up high that you might notice is these doors aren't flush with each other. But it's an affordable car. And Overall, it's really impressive. Here we go. Cleaning the MG3. I think I've definitely learned a lot about the design of the car. I really like the design choices they made, especially these angular things and that rear spoiler matching the uh, the MG logo. I think it's really, really nice. 